Thank you. Was that Mickey or? I mean, I, I am from Orlando, so that'd be totally cool. <laughs> oh, sorry, Hermit the Frog. Okay. So, hello everyone. My name is Sergio Cruz, and today I'm going to talk about difficulties people face when upgrading from AngularJS to Angular. I'm going to tell you a little bit about my history with AngularJS, as well as uh, just some experience I've gathered from helping people upgrade and a couple of things I learned along the way. I'm a UI engineer and instructor at Code School and Pluralsight, and you can find me on Twitter at hashtag surge. And speaking of hashtag, let's go back in time real quick, back to 2013. Uh, and back then, words like hashtag and selfie were just added to major English dictionaries. But what else happened that year? Hmm. I wrote my very first AngularJS app. And back then, the steps were very straightforward. I don't know about you, but when I wrote my first Angular app, I went to the AngularJS website and I downloaded the libraries I needed to get going. Once I've done that, I throw, some, I throw those scripts on the HTML template through some script tags, wrote some code, and that was it. Profit, right? That's all that it took, and I absolutely loved it. It was such a great experience writing AngularJS back then once you learned it. And, and that was the cool thing about it, right? Like once you got those concepts down, going from idea to conception happened in no time. Super uh, fast prototyping. And I love that, that although we were able to move fast, the code still stayed pretty well organized. Uh, lots of uh, good separation of concerns happening. You see, back then, I was writing a lot of jQuery style of code, and I had no separation of concerns in that whatsoever. Just concerns. <laughs> what I really loved about uh, learning AngularJS back then was that it was similar, there were a lot of similar concepts than what we were already used to on the server side of things. So you want to talk about MVC and dependency injection. So it all kind of came, you know, it was, it was second nature. It was such a good time. Loved AngularJS back in 2013. Okay, let's come back to the present now. We're back in 2017. And it's time to write our first client-side app. And what has happened? Let's go through the steps. What does it look like uh, when we're writing Angular today? Well, we start by installing the CLI. Once we've done that, we use it to generate a project. Oh, hello, by the way, there's this thing, TypeScript, that we kind of got to get used to, right? Uh, use NPM, all the things. No more going to websites and downloading scripts manually like I did in 2013. By the way, no script tags either. That's all handled, handled automatically for us by the CLI, which is great. But there's a lot of, you know, magic happening. And when you get stuck, where do you go for help? Well, this might sound a little bit over-exaggerated, you know, a little bit funny perhaps, but this happens to new Angular devs all the time. And this might sound like it's a problem with Angular, but it's really not. It's a problem with writing modern JavaScript today in 2017. You see, there's a lot to gain, right? There's a lot of cool things that we're, that we're doing. We're, we're, we're using Node.js on the client side. So, and with that, we get to use things like Webpack to use modules, so there's no dependency on global state anymore. We get to take advantage, take advantage of modern languages like TypeScript, or even ES2015, right? ES2016, 2017, it's probably about to come out, I don't know. Um, and the whole JavaScript uh, world, it's just not limited to browsers anymore. No, that's long gone. Just the other day, I recorded a video on how to fly a drone using JavaScript, and that happened with five lines of code. It's super cool. Now, all this cool stuff is happening while we're keeping things backwards compatible, right? What I mean by that is that, well, people who are still using older browsers, those users, they can't be left behind. We still need to cater for them as well. So, you know, we're moving fast, but we can't leave them behind. And we're also, oops, 
And we're also learning best practices, gosh, my bad, as we go. Uh, what I mean by that is we're really making up best practices like every other week. You know what I'm talking about. So, lots of, um, so, a lot have changed. It's not like just throwing script tags on the page anymore, right? Um, it, it's well beyond that, but it, it you know, it, it's become a little bit more difficult, especially to onboard new developers as well, right? And, now, and you might be thinking just, you know, fresh gra uh, grads, but, but, but not really. I have a lot of good friends that have spent a lot of time in focusing on other areas of programming, and now they want to get on board it on client side, and I always feel bad because they're not just learning the language. They're learning a whole set of tools just to get going. So there's a lot to gain, lots of amazing things happening with JavaScript, but it, definitely comes at a price. This is what I call a trade-off. So JavaScript has gotten harder, right? And we need to kind of take it upon ourselves to help newcomers get going. If you're an experienced developer, I'm sure perhaps there's a, a, maybe a more uh, a newer person that's just getting started at your job. Take it upon yourself to help them out. Um, and we'll talk a little, bit about, uh, a little bit more about this as we go. By the way, I'm also kind of live tweeting as I'm doing this talk. It's pretty magic. It's great. So we talked about Angular, well, we talked about JavaScript and, and the, the challenges that are happening with JavaScript in 2017, right? Let's be a little bit more specific to Angular. Is it, what's, what's scary or, or, or what's intimidating about it? Is it the fact that we need to use TypeScript? Well, we don't have to use it, but most people do, right? And, I mean, if you look at this file, it definitely has a lot of characters that was not in my uh, ES5 files back in 2013 when I wrote Ang AngularJS. It's, it's different, right? Or is it the template syntax? Same thing, right? We have lots of new characters on our HTML. Um, you know, stars for, you know, stru structural directives, or is it, you know, square brackets and parentheses? Is it that? Is it the template syntax, or is it the command line tools? I, by the way, I absolutely love Angular CLI. It's, it's great. The fact that I get to focus on building my product instead of, you know, all of the, how am I gonna run this and how are we gonna run tests and whatnot, it's pretty great. But the fact that we even have one, the, fa the fact that we, you know, it's, that's kind of the recommended way to starting an app, it it's, just goes to show how really intimidating this whole new ecosystem has become. So let's talk about some actual challenges I ran into when helping people upgrade. And the first thing that came up a lot was a lot of code that was mixed with server-side code. What I'm talking about is perhaps you have a Ruby on Rails app, and now you're running AngularJS at the same time. Well, for AngularJS, that's mostly okay, right? But now if you want to start talking about the, the whole modern set of tools, it requires a lot of configuration files um, to get going, right? So for testing, for, say, your Webpack config, for example, and it, start having some competing priorities on the code base. That's a challenge that we usually face. The other thing is CoffeeScript. A lot of people still use CoffeeScript. And since one of the things I recommend before upgrading is to use TypeScript, I understand you don't have to, but it's, it's just the recommended way. Just do it is what I tell individuals I help out with. And yeah, the first thing we got to do is go from CoffeeScript to TypeScript. How do you do that? We found some automated ways of, of, of doing it, of accomplishing it, but it was never perfect, okay? It's never a solution that we're super happy with. Um, now go ahead and skip the, the, the next two, Bauer and Grunt. They're you know, a little bit over, uh, I don't know, they're a little bit old now. There are better solutions that have replaced them, but a lot of people still use it. And to go from AngularJS to Angular, you know, there are, it's a little bit more difficult. You know, I wanted to really understand, I wanted to know if these problems I was facing, uh, these challenges I was running into, were they representative of the community at large? So um, 
I teamed up with a group of really smart people, and we use something called science. To I don't know if you've ever heard of it. Science is pretty cool. But yeah, we, uh, so this was led out by Jeff Welpley. Uh, by the way, thanks, Jeff. And what happened was we sent out a survey just asking people about their upgrade process, timeline, what tools were they using, and whatnot. And here are some of the findings. Um, this word cloud you see here with the Angular logo, there was an open, uh, open-ended question on there. We just asked people, hey, what challenges, what difficulties did you run into? And I made this word cloud based on their answers. And we can see here to, to, to the right of the A, uh, the first thing that comes up is time, right? We can see time. To the left, we can see change, type scripts there, upgrade. Let, let's talk about those pain points in a little bit more detail. Um, the first thing that came up a lot was time and priority. You see, people couldn't afford to just stop what they were doing and start you know, writing Angular in their code. It just wasn't a thing. They had to keep moving. They had to keep shipping features. And the next one is directly related to this, business incentive. You see, a lot of businesses, they don't make more money just by writing with latest, you know, the latest and greatest tools. It's the real world that we're talking about here. You know, this is not how money happens. So there's you know, some very little incentive uh, to, to get going. Now, now, I understand the reasoning behind it. I understand that you know, just testability is better and you know, your code's more mature and less bugs and whatnot, but a lot, of, a lot of these businesses don't, especially those that aren't very tech savvy um, and whatnot. Then we get into the hesitation or fear area a little bit. So team proficiency came up a lot. What do I mean by that, team proficiency? Well, a lot of people knew AngularJS really well, and they didn't want to relearn it from scratch. They didn't want to learn a new framework from scratch, and that's what it felt like to upgrade to Angular. Third-party libraries was huge as well. You see, there are a lot of libraries that they have the AngularJS version over here, then they have the Angular version over here, but there's no upgrade path, there's no bridge between them. And now when people decide to upgrade from AngularJS to Angular, we're talking about a rewrite. And that's a challenge, right? Um, and all of the tooling that we already talked about, um, especially you know, old school style of writing JavaScript, no tooling was needed. But now we definitely need a whole lot of tooling. So I can only conclude that the Angular, the new Angular syntax is not the reason why aren't, people aren't upgrading. Mm -mm. I think it's more related to time to learn and fear of change, as well as business restraints and whatnot. But you can only fit so many characters in a tweet, right? What can we, what can we do about it, though? How, how, to, how to go about it, especially if you're still writing Angular JS today? And you've probably heard many of these advices over and over again. But let's go through them. It'll be worth it. So first thing that comes up, um, first thing that we can do is definitely approach things using a component-based architecture. Right? So starting with 1.5, I imagine a lot of us know this. We have this new API that's more directly transferable in an upgrade uh, from AngularJS to Angular. So instead of just spending a lot of time and you know, re-engineering your whole app and how it works to go from AngularJS to Angular, just take, just take a step back. And somebody I really respect said this, that his last name uh, rhymes with memes, Joe Eames, pretty cool guy. Anyway, uh, he said, uh, and I really liked it, so I'm definitely misquoting him on here, but whatever, paraphrasing, if you will. Um, look at a page and re-architect it in your mind using component-based architecture. So instead of trying to approach it the old way with controllers and obscure directives and all of that, just approach it with components. And I completely agree with that, because that'll be practically directly transferable from AngularJS to Angular. The other thing is, don't do like I did back when I wrote my first Angular JS app in 2013. You see, my app wasn't a full single page application. No, it was a container within a website. Um, and that would have been a whole lot more difficult. Let's just write full single page applications and consume an API and whatnot. That will make life a whole lot easier. It goes along with the whole dedicated you know, repo and whatnot. Um, 
NPM. Let's just use NPM or Yarn. I mean, same effect, right? But that will allow for uh, modules to be used. It, it's, a, it's a next step. Yeah, remember when I had to go to the Angular website and download code? Well, NPM automates this and more, right? Now we get modules that become available. And if we have them, now we can take advantage of Webpack and completely remove that dependency from the global state, from the window object. And if we have Webpack, then using TypeScript kind of becomes a no-brainer. So if we take these steps, and I understand that for some of you, uh, depending on how you wrote AngularJS, will be a very difficult to, to, to adopt some of these steps. But keep them in mind, maybe as a blueprint or something. And, and just take you know, micro steps towards this. Because when, when you follow these steps, it'll be a whole lot easier. Um, now, if, you, if there's a, a legitimate reason why you haven't been able to upgrade, I feel your pain. I'm with you. And I'm going to do everything I can to, to help you move forward. And I'm going to take the liberty to speak on behalf of this whole community, especially the Angular team. We're with you. We hear you. Okay? Don't, don't feel like we've left you behind or anything like that. Um, in the survey, uh, a, lot, uh, a lot of individuals that were still using a certain version of AngularJS because they still had to support Internet Explorer 8. So that's, that's a legitimate you know, constraint. So there are legitimate reasons why people aren't doing it. So hey, you know, just make sure your voice is heard, but, but don't feel like we've forgotten you or anything like that. And know that you can sit with us. Know that, um, man, I love that you know, just Brad Green or other uh, Angular team uh, individuals, they always wear the t-shirt that reads you can sit with us. I ended up buying one for myself as well. And I believe we ended the last energy comp with this as well. And, and it's so true. It's so uh, uh, representative of the Angular team and this whole community as a whole. Um, everyone's so approachable. If you have questions, just walk up to people and ask. See, if you forget everything I've said in this talk today, I, I want you to remember just one word. And that word would be empathy. You see, if you're experienced, I've mentioned this before, but if you're experienced, just take the time to help somebody out. You know, I, I remember um, feeling so left out, and if I can be vulnerable and completely transparent here for a second, when everyone was so hyped up about Redux, it didn't make any sense to me. I'm like, isn't this the same thing as just throwing some data in a factory and sharing it with a bunch of controllers? I don't get it. And finally, someone took the time to break it down for me and explain why it was a very good way of approaching it. And I agree. And I'll never forget that. You see, you could be that person for somebody as well. We all have silly questions and, and whatnot that we're probably afraid of admitting, right? Not that there's none of that. You can sit with us. You see, if you're a library author, you too. You can make a difference as well. Just write some really approachable code examples. This will make a huge difference. Um, and, and, and if you're just starting out, if you're a newcomer, and you run into just a library that you just can't make any sense out of it, let the authors know, or even better. Try to understand it, and then try to come up with, I don't know, a little guide or, or code examples that make sense to you or, or people that are similar to you, and open a pull request. You see, empathy is a two-way street. You know, authors, they're really busy as well doing the awesome things that they do. So, you know, we could all kind of help each other out here. And if you haven't learned Angular yet, then why not? I, I kind of just want to end with this. If you haven't learned Angular yet, what's keeping you from doing so? I just made up the silly hashtag here, why learn Angular? I want to know what's going on. I, want, I, you know, I'm, I work at Code School and Pluralsight, and we make a lot of teaching material there. And I want to help you. I want to make content. Okay? I, I, but we need to know what's going on. So I would love this to be a little conversation starter. You know, tweet at me, message me, email me, or just any of the awesome educators that I know that are in the room. We love to know what, what we can help you with. How can we serve you? Do, would, a, would an upgrade guide, perhaps upgrade videos help you? Because I would love to do that. But I'm not going to do it if nobody wants it, because I'm not going to waste my time. So again, let, just be a, let this be a conversation starter. Hit at me at the, at the hallway, hallway or whatever. Let's just talk. 
and, and, and let's grow as a community together. Thank you again. My name is Sergio Cruz, and you can find me on Twitter as hashtag Serge. Thank you. <laughs>